Hi class, welcome back. I'm Dr. April Strom, and in this video, we are gonna explore another example of the limit definition of a derivative. But this example is gonna be a radical function. So let's suppose this time we have f of x equals square root of x, okay? So let's get started. We are gonna, of course, start with our f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero. And this time you're probably pretty used to this. What we have to start off with is evaluating the function with x plus h as the new input. So instead of a square root of x, we'll have a square root of x plus h. And then we will subtract off the original function, so square root of x. And then all of that, of course, is over a, an h. Okay, so divide by h here. All right, so now you have to think really creatively of how could I do some algebra, particularly to the numerator, so that I can simplify things, and eventually, the whole goal is eventually find a clever way to remove the h here in the denominator so that it's perfectly legal for us to actually take the limit as h goes to zero, and then hopefully be done with our derivative. All right, so the tricky step here is this, and this is not a step that's kind of um, around very often. We don't see this come up that often, but here's what's gonna work for us in this particular case. Here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by the conjugate of that numerator. And the conjugate looks something like this. So we're gonna multiply here by basically what's gonna look like the numerator, except we're gonna uh, change that subtraction to be an addition. And we're gonna multiply that on top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator by that conjugate. So we're gonna have here a square root of x plus h, but plus rather than minus, and square root of x here. So square root of x plus h plus square root of x, divided by, and I'm gonna choose the same thing in my denominator here, x, square root of x plus h plus square root of x. And the whole reason I do that is because if you look at what's uh, written here in this pink marker, we see that that's just a fancy way of writing a one. Square root of x plus h plus square root of x divided by itself, that's just one. So I have not changed the problem at all. Okay. But now what I have to imagine is really this numerator is, think about it in terms of being in parentheses here, and same with this numerator, and truly same with this denominator. And so what I'm gonna do in my very next step is I'm gonna take the numerators and actually distribute them all out. I'm gonna FOIL all of them. So here we go, we have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, now I'm gonna have square root of x plus h times itself over here when I distribute. Well, the beautiful thing is square root and square root goes away. And what's left is just an x plus h from that first part of my FOIL. The f in FOIL would be this part right here. And I'm just gonna put it in parentheses so that it's contained. This is my x plus h that resulted from that distribution. And then now I will take a square root of x plus h and multiply it down here by the square root of x. Well, when I do that, I get plus square root of x plus h times a square root of x. Okay, I'm not actually gonna multiply them just yet because you're gonna see what's gonna happen. Because in my very next step, continuing on with the FOIL, I need to do the same process with the square root of x multiplied by this square root of x plus h, but I'm gonna have to subtract them because I have a negative in front of that square root of x. So I will subtract off a square root of x multiplied by a square root of x plus h. We continue on in this very last piece where I need to finish off my FOIL of negative square root of x times a positive square root of x. Well, yet again, square root times another square root, at least those go away. And what's left is just the x, but I need to subtract it. So subtract my x, that's here. And then now all of that is going to be divided by my denominator. Of course, I still have an h that's here, and it needs to be distributed on the square root of x plus h, as well as the square root of x that's here. So I'm gonna write those two terms down. I have in my denominator h times the square root of x plus h 
plus h times square root of x. So now we hopefully recognize that here in this term, I have a plus square root of x plus h times the square root of x minus what is essentially the same thing. Even though that those are written in a different order, multiplication is commutative. So this term here is exactly the same as this term here and those subtract off. So that simplifies a lot for us. So let's write what's left. F prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of, still I have an x plus h. Later, I have a minus x here. And that's all being divided by this whole denominator unchanged. Let's just rewrite all of that. h times square root of x plus h plus h square roots of x. Okay. I have more simplification that I can do in the numerator. I notice I have an x here, but I'm later subtracting off that x. So now what's left is, I, so I have f prime of x equals the limit as h goes to zero. What's left in my numerator with this x subtracting off with this x is simply to just h in the numerator. Of course, all divided by this existing denominator, h square roots of x plus h plus h square roots of x. And then now you might recognize that I actually have obviously h in the numerator with a couple of h's in the denominator. I could factor out that h in that denominator as a greatest common factor. And when I do, I have f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches zero, still unchanged in my numerator, still just an h. Denominator would look like h times square root of x plus h plus square root of x. Okay, once I have factored out that common h. And then here, and we've seen this before, I have an h in my numerator that divides out with h in the denominator. Now, just because I have what appears to be nothing in my numerator, there in fact is still something, even though this h divided out with a bottom h, I still have a one in my numerator. So I have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of one divided by, well, still I have square root of x plus h plus a square root of x, okay? The good news is I don't just have an h in the denominator. See, that was problematic for us because we couldn't actually get that zero to be by itself in the denominator. But here, even though we have an h still left in our denominator, if I now take the limit as h goes to zero, I can think if that h were in fact zero, what would happen? In the denominator, I would then just have square root of x plus zero, so square root of x, plus square root of x. And so when I think about that, I can get my final result here of just simply saying I have one divided by Square root of x plus another square root of x, well, that's just two square root of x. Notice I no longer have the limit notation either written because we have taken the limit. We've evaluated this expression for when h was in fact zero. So this answer here is in fact my derivative to that original function square root of x. We have simply one divided by two square roots of x. So thank you very much for watching this particular video. We hope that this series was helpful for you on the limit definition of the derivative. And please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe to our channel.